Okay, so there's several ways you can use your Raspberry Pi 5 with a laptop. This is one of them. Well, this is actually a lap dock from Dopesplay, and uh, it's probably the easiest way of all. So if we have a look at what's plugged in. So I'm powering the Pi 5 uh, with its own power adapter at the moment. I've also got an HDMI cable plugged in to the lap dock because this particular lap dock has HDMI in. It also supports USB-C in, but that's not supported on the Raspberry Pi 5. At this stage, I'm not sure if it will be in the future. Uh, but I've also got a cable here which supplies the mouse and keyboard data to my Pi. So as we can see here, if we get in a little bit closer, we have trackpad uh, and we also have things like the Windows key so we can move through all the open apps and everything. So I've launched the web browser, so this is Chromium. And if we go to YouTube, just to show that it's all playing, uh, it also supports sound as well on this laptop. And let's do a search for Lee PSP Video HDR. I used this with this laptop yesterday uh, because my daughter needed the kitchen, which is where I make my videos. And actually it was really good. You can see the trackpad works as well, so multi-touch gestures work. And if I want to put the audio up. But I'll also show you some other ways you can use your laptop with a Raspberry Pi 5 later on in the video. But before I do that, let's just show how the laptop can be a lot neater. So this is the Station PC M3. And this supports USB-C display port, uh, which I'm not sure if the Pi 5 will do in the future. But it's really handy. So what we can do is we can shut down this Pi. So we don't need HDMI. So I've plugged in its own power supply and the USB-C cable. Switch it on. So you can see just the power cable for the station PC, a USB-C cable joining the two together, and we have touchscreen control, uh, but we also have mouse and keyboard. We had touchscreen control on the Raspberry Pi 5 before as well. I don't know if I showed it earlier on, but it does work. But if I wanted to launch something, you can see that it comes up and everything works as it should. So we can quit out of that. But by far the neatest solution has to be with an Android phone. So this is one USB-C cable uh, just plugged in to this Honor View 20 phone. And do projection mode and hit desktop mode. You can see magic desktop comes up and it's all controllable mouse, keyboard, uh, all works with this. So, yeah, super functional, really, really nice, quick laptop. And you can see I've got various different emulators and things on there as well, uh, but it also comes with a full desktop browser. So if we do a search for BBC Sport. And you can also use the touchscreen just as you normally would on a tablet as well. So we click on the website, if we maximize it, and we can scroll up and down and so on. But let's get back to Raspberry Pi 5 and how you can use that through your laptop. This is an M1 MacBook Air. Uh, if I plug my Pi in, but just to power, so nothing else, that will start up. And this is using my network to connect with VNC. So if we do a search for VNC and launch that and go to Pi 5X, and now you can see that I'm controlling my Pi via remote access, so we can do this from anywhere in the world, but they can also just do it locally, uh, we're on the same network, uh, and I've got a separate video showing exactly how to do this, but if we open up the internet and Chromium, you can see that it will launch as normal. So this is remote access, which works on a Windows computer, uh, or a Linux computer, or as you can see, a MacBook. But what if you want to connect it directly to your laptop and not do it via a network? Well, then you're going to need an HDMI capture device like this one. So this is USB. So I'm going to need a USB-A to C adapter for my MacBook. So let's plug that in. Mouse and keyboard. And plug in the HDMI cable into my Pi and then into the capture device. So now if I introduce this mouse and keyboard, select QuickTime on my MacBook, and I'll show how to do this on Windows in a minute, and new movie recording, 
and we can select a different camera so here we've got USB video I'm just going to restart my Pi and you can see it's starting up and so I've got a mouse keyboard plugged in and uh, as you can see it's more responsive than VNC uh, it definitely is more responsive so if we open the browser and uh, there is a slight input delay so if you're going to play a game then that's not going to be ideal let's install a game uh, sudo at install xmoto it's doable uh, but you know certainly fast games you're not going to do it on I've done separate videos where I've shown an Xbox plugged into this and I've used it and played games but there's just that little bit too much input lag for certain games but using it as a computer it's really hard to notice that there's any input lag so if we now launch Xmoto and uh, this is just space and cursor keys to control this New profile, Lee, use profile and yes, and just say okay to all of that, and let's just pick a random level, here we go, and, oh crikey, am I going to get down there, okay, not like that, but you can see that actually it is working, what do I have to do, jump over it? Not sure if I've got to go all the way down. Let's go back a bit. But you can see that it's it's definitely in this sort of game, it is playable and it is responsive. Let's pick a different level that I can actually show it working. Uh, quit level and let's just go for something here. That looks like it's going to be easy to see. So oh let's try that again. Where am I gonna go? Let's go this way. Woo. And let's see if we can land that. Not very well. These are all difficult levels I'm picking, but it definitely, I'm looking at the screen, I'm not feeling that it's not doing something that I'm making it do. So if I do that, I don't think I can go anywhere from here, can I? But yeah, it's not struggling. Right, so let's quit out of that. and close all this down, and even the mouse pointer and everything, it is responsive, it's doing what I'm expecting it to do. So if I press the Windows key, you can see that it's coming up and going away, straight away. So really nice functionality. Let's try it on a different device. How about my 69.99 pound laptop from TikTok? So we need to go into camera on this and launch that. This is running Windows 11, this laptop, little cheap seller, and I've got loads of videos on this. It's amazing what's run on it really quite well. So we'll say okay to location. And where do I change the camera? Is it this one? Yeah, so there is my Pi, full screen. And, uh, oh, it's an awful quality display. Uh, from a certain angle as well. So now you can see if I tap on this, that I can go up and down, I can pick X Moto as a game again. Let's try and pick a level that's um, a bit easier to play. So, not Challenge Cup, Arrows Training. And let's go for number 10. Oh yeah, really easy, well done Lee. Right, so, yeah, that feels all right. Oh, it's really, really difficult though. How on earth are you supposed to get up there? Bit like that. Oh, that's better. No. <laughs> but as you can see, it's definitely working even on a super cheap Windows device. But what about a really old laptop? So let's, uh, oh, I'm, I'm shutting down the wrong computer here. So let's close down that camera and shut this laptop down and try something else. This is my mid-2010 MacBook, so from 2010. The screen doesn't hold itself up that well because it's got a, a cover on it. So let's switch that on. I'm not sure what this is going to boot by default, but we'll soon find out if there's any power in it. There isn't. Let's get a power supply. 
Okay, let's try again. Now I've got power plugged in. I hope this still works. That's a good sound. So this dual boots Windows 10 or 11 and Mac OS. Okay, so it's gonna do Mac OS first of all. It's a really good display on this for, for something made in 2010. It just works so well. Uh, I wonder if I've got OBS on here. If I have, I'll use that. If I haven't, I'll use QuickTime. No, it doesn't look like I have. So let's launch QuickTime. Takes a bit longer than my M1 Mac. See, my daughter's been watching Harry Potter uh, using the DVD player because we haven't got very many DVD players in the house. So file, new movie recording. This will be an awful camera. Say so OK to the camera and OK. And let's switch that to USB video. Oh no, I've unplugged it. And there we go, it's come up and it's looking really nice on my MacBook. And again, Xmoto, you can see it launches, it's all working. Feels more responsive than the Celeron, which is uh, impressive considering how old it is. I mean, it would have been a thousand pound back in the day. I think I paid about 260 pound for it. Uh, I'll, put, I'll try and look up when I paid for it, uh, but it was years ago. Oh, that didn't work. How are we going through here? So we've got a we've got a break. If we're looking at the demo that's there, so let's go forward and break. No, I've got to lean forward as well. But it definitely I'm doing it, and I'm not thinking. Oh, <laughs> a little bit too violent. But as you can see, that's definitely working as well. So let's close that down now. Have I got something I can run? Linux on. Here's Kubuntu running on the little Coda seller on laptop and you can see I've got the capture device plugged into the USB-C socket because I'm running Kubuntu from this USB drive and here's my Pi 4 so let's see if it's going to work. So I've just connected the Wi-Fi let's click on the discover store and do a search for OBS. OBS Studio unofficial. Oh, okay we'll just go with that. Okay so let's launch OBS I'll leave it as it is, 1366 by 768. So let's have a source plus video capture device. And new. Oh, that looks right. Let's just say OK to all of that. OK, so vertical sources, I have it here and it's working if I put it on VGR3 emulated. But I can't seem to get it to go full screen. Ah. Display one. Ah, here we go. And there's my mouse. So that's Raspberry Pi OS running from the Raspberry Pi 5, going through the capture device into Kubuntu, which is Linux. Uh, it's Ubuntu with KDE Plasma interface. And as you can see, it's all working. So if I go again back in, well, let's try it. Should we try a different game? Extreme Tux Racer. So let's just close that down and let's go for Tux. And also this operating system is just running from the USB stick. I haven't properly installed it natively on the device, so uh, it would be a bit faster if I did that. And you can see my screen dimmed. I think my laptop's probably low on battery, so let's do this quickly. So if I do that, that'll come back on. And let's just skip through this. Here we go. And you can see that it's responsive. I did miss the first fish, but that was more me rather than any input lag but uh, it, it's definitely playable. Looks nice and smooth. Oh, totally missed. <laughs> and that again is more me. So definitely working fine through Linux. I think I'll try Chrome OS Flex because that's the last sort of mainstream computer that I haven't tried with the capture device. So I've just written Chrome OS Flex to this SSD drive. So let's boot from that. So I plugged it in via USB 3 and I've gone into the boot menu so let's boot from the SATA drive and here's Chrome OS Flex. It's a great operating system for low powered laptops and hopefully just browsing as guests will be enough to do this. Right, have I got camera here? I have. and it's picked up the capture device straight away. 
So let's, oh, and it's there. So if I go full screen, well, that was super easy. If we do video, does it give us a better ratio? It does. And is this usable as is? Let's see, do I have any mice? Oh, there you go. I didn't have a mouse pointer, but that's because it was still in the game. Oh, and it's in some sort of reverse thing at the moment. Okay, that'll be one of these settings here. Is it this one? Mirror preview off. That's better. But that, yeah, it doesn't seem to go full, full screen, but it is definitely usable. So there's probably another way of doing this, but that definitely is working. So if I click down here, and again, we go into games, Extreme Tux Racer, and just go back in and just see that it's nice and responsive. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine. It feels, it feels right when I'm going left and right on the keyboard. If I move out a bit, you'll be able to see that when I press it, it is definitely reacting there's not much input lag there at all. Nothing, nothing too much to worry about. Obviously on basic games, you're not gonna play a first person shooter on this, but uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. I'll shut down my pie. Please like and subscribe.